walk through a very simple program of a two-dimensional part. It's got a couple of circular pockets, a bolt circle, drilled bolt circle, and a frame around the outside of the part. Simple geometry, but very typical of what you might see on many parts in the job shop arena. But first I want to talk a little bit about how would you traditionally process that with CAD CAM. Many shops out there who say, I'll never use conversational because I have CAD CAM packages and I have programmers. And that's fine. We've said in other videos, we don't try to convert everybody to conversational. But I do want to take a minute to show how something like this could be beneficial done on conversational control. So here we have a screenshot from Master CAM. But insert your favorite CAM system here. It really doesn't matter. This all is true no matter what CAM system you're using. You've typically got in a shop environment a few people that have been trained to use CAD CAM. Not everybody in the shop environment is capable of going to the CAD station and programming the part. So you have a few guys waiting on a couple other people to create parts. Now there are definitely parts out there where that is necessary, three-dimensional core cavities, what have you, but there's also very simple geometry like the one we have here where there's no need for your operators to wait for it a guy in the cam room to get a program to them. And once they do get that program posted, there's no flexibility. Any changes that you want to make to the program, you have to go back to the cam programmer and he has to reprogram it. I can't move operations around and so forth. Now where the Herco advantage comes in here is with the conversational control being used at the floor in conjunction with the print. We're going to give every operator in the shop the same ability to create a program at will when necessary, whether it be for fixtures or simple geometry like what we see here. First thing we want to do is we're going to go through our tool setup. Tool setup is going to create the type of tool we're going to use. We're going to associate some speeds and feeds for this tool. So as I call it up in the program, my speeds and feeds will automatically be set for me. This does a couple things. This helps increase the speed by which I can program, but it also reduces the amount of knowledge that every operator on the floor has to have. If you have a library of tools set up, the operator simply selects that tool and the type of material it's for and doesn't have to worry about the feed rates and RPM because you will have predetermined that in the library. So let's walk through milling this particular part. First thing we're going to do, probably going to establish Z0. We're going to machine some material off the top to create the face of the part. We do that in a mill face block. We simply walk through, fill out the individual um, fields it's asking for. It wants to know a corner of the part, what's the length and width of the part in X and Y, maybe your Z start, your rapid to position, your Z bottom, what's the final position or the final. Uh, um, location of the face of the part. In this case, we're going to take it down to Z0. What tool am I using? The strategy. I'm going to use X bi-directional. I'm going to face in the X direction, back and forth, zigzagging. Speeds and feeds are already set with the tool. Next, I'm going to mill a frame around the outside of the part. Again, I simply answer the questions. Where's the corner? First corner of the part. I pick one of the four corners and I designate that the XY corner. I then give it the length and width in X and Y. Again, my Z start or my rapid to position, what's the final depth, corner radiuses if there are any. Pick the tool. The strategy is going to be an outside. I'm cutting the outside of this frame. Speeds and feeds came in with the tool. Program is done for the mill frame. Same for the mill circle. Here I give it the center, the radius, the tool. The next circle. Again, where's the center, what's the radius, what's my depth, what tool, this case and the one previous, it's a pocket boundary, that's my milling type, instead of outside, inside, so forth, it's just a pocket boundary. And the last features on this particular part are holes. I'm going to select that it's a drilling cycle. I can do drilling, tapping, boring, reaming, whatever. This particular example, I'm just doing a drilling cycle. I select the the drill, I give it a depth. Again, the tool, when I select it, the speeds and feeds come in. There's a pecking type if I would choose to use it. 
and then I give it the bolt circle. How many holes are in the bolt circle? Well, in this case, there's only seven. However, they are equally spaced as if there were eight on this particular bolt circle. So I'm going to put the number eight. Give it the center, the radius of the bolt circle, the start angle, where on the circle I'm going to call hole number one, in this case, the 12 o'clock position. Three o'clock would be zero. I'm going to put the first hole at 90 degrees. The reason that's important is because I need to know which hole is number one. Because counting from that position counterclockwise, I have holes one, two, three, four, and so on. In that case, number eight, the eighth hole in this eight hole bolt circle, I do not need. So I simply put in the skip list number eight, and you can see that it omitted that particular hole from the bolt circle. Now that was very easy to walk through. Well now, as I mentioned with the CAD CAM, I don't have much flexibility. I can't go in and rearrange processes. I can't use things that I've already programmed to just cut, copy, and paste where I want to put them. With conversational, we're able to add operations very, very easily by using things we've already programmed. In this case, I want to take that mill frame, I'm sorry, the mill circle pocket, the large one, and I want to add a chamfer to it. Well, I can simply highlight that particular block, go into my block, multiple block functions, copy, and then paste that block after the holes block at the end of the program. So now I've taken block number three, I've highlighted it, copied it, and pasted it after block five. I then can go in and change the depth to minus 30 thousandths, change the tool that I'm going to use, and I now have used geometry that I've already programmed, copied it, pasted it, made a few changes and was able to do to uh, reproduce that with a different feature. Now very simple to reprogram a circle, but what if that had been a very intricate lines and arcs arbitrary shape? I would have had to program it again. Here I just copy it, paste it, change the tool, and I'm done.